So good afternoon everybody, my name is John Fortune, I'm the Head Analyst at Ethical Trading Institute where we teach people to trade the forex market uh, using psychology which is how the institutions and the banks uh, trade the markets and what we're going to do today for the new people in the room, we're going to start to have a look at us uh, putting together a plan for the week ahead uh, and we're going to do that by first of all looking at something we call the fundamental analysis where we go through the fundamentals uh, fairly briefly and we just put them into a spreadsheet and it allows us to see uh, how we're going to approach the markets this week in terms of uh, stop losses etc because one of the things you need to uh, remember is and I've said it in the room here before is that when you have news announcements these create uncertainty and uncertainty expresses itself in the form of volatility and volatility requires risk management so if we have a volatile market based around data we need to uh, trade with larger stops and if we have uh, no data or if we have days or a couple of days in a row where there isn't any really any data uh, coming out then we can trade uh, with tighter stops and get the really best uh, risk to reward trades which is which is really what's going to put the uh, the money into your account so let's just get up the uh, fundamentals for this week Now, for those of you who are in the room last week, I hope you found the uh, some of the setups we were looking at helpful. In the in the ETI room, we actually put just over five percent on the account last week, which is a very very good week. Um, so, hopefully, you can see that the stuff that we give you here on a Monday, uh, provided to you by uh, us and Portex, is something that has merit to it, and we do really want to give you something that you can put into practice uh, in the week ahead. So, let me bring up the fundamentals for this week. Uh, uh, if somebody could tell me when they can see those on the on the chart you can okay thank you John uh, John's a star man at the moment he's helping me out here Okay, so if we have a look first of all, the first thing to notice today is that we have a Japanese bank holiday all day today. Now, because of this, uh, you'll find that when we have bank holidays in the US or if we have bank holiday in the UK or indeed if we have bank holiday in Japan, which are the big financial centers of the world, uh, it does deprive the market of major liquidity and therefore often you can find that the markets do not move very much. Um, if barely at all. I mean, if you look back to July 4th, which was the last uh, major U.S. national holiday, I, I believe might be the one, one before last, but certainly, uh, obviously, wasn't that long ago. Uh, the markets barely moved all week, and uh, any trades taken that week, not just on that day, but any trades taken that week, probably would have lost money because we only make money when the markets are moving. So that's the first thing to notice today. So there's uh, probably no rush. Uh, to dive into the markets today, you may find that uh, staying out of the markets today may in fact uh, produce better results come the end of the week. So if we now go and have a little look down to the data for today, you can see that we already have the Chinese data which came out this morning and in fact it came out extremely good for China. Now this should have provided a little boost up uh, pretty much across the board but uh, mainly in uh, the Australian dollar uh, we've spoken about here in the room before so this won't be news uh, to those of you who come here uh, every Monday but for the new traders when you see Chinese data like this you want to look over towards the Australian dollar because China is a major importer of Australian uh, materials and natural resources so when the Chinese economy is doing good it provides an uptick uh, for the Australian dollar and when the Chinese economy is doing bad usually you'll see that negatively affecting uh, the Australian dollar as well so just bear that in mind but if we go and have a look we can see that only pretty much um, New Zealand US dollar has any major data uh, coming out today and this is at 11.45 this evening now this is CPI which is quarter on quarter now if you're not sure 100% about what CPI is or you're not sure about 
uh, some of the fundamental data. A good rule of thumb to remember is if you have a little look at the um, how often it's released. So if you look at the major news here and you see this is quarter on quarter, or you have a look over here and you see this is year on year. Generally speaking, the less it is released in the year, so if you get a year on year release, this will uh, be considered more major than say something which is a week on week or maybe a month on month, uh, as you can see here, M&M. &M. So that's a good, if you're not 100% sure about the fundamentals, don't worry too much. You can use that as a rule of thumb. You don't have to uh, suddenly become an economist or anything. So we have the New Zealand CPI uh, at 11.45. Uh, and I do expect this to uh, be something which does have the potential to move the market somewhat. So we're going to put a capital X down on the New Zealand for this evening. Now, if we go down and have a look, we can see tomorrow morning we have the uh, monetary policy meeting minutes, uh, which is going to affect the Aussie. Now, this is something that can move the market. So we're going to put a uh, we're going to put an X down next to the Aussie US dollar as well. And then you can see just below that, we also have uh, at 9.30 tomorrow morning, which is a significant piece of data coming out for the pound. So this is one thing we have to uh, take into account in our plan for this week. Uh, and is it something in the room we're going to be looking to uh, specifically create a trade around uh, this piece of data on Tuesday and see if we can take advantage of this as a catalyst in the market. So we're going to put down an X tomorrow morning for the the minutes meeting for the Aussie dollar and we're going to put a capital X down for the pound and the uh, CPI release tomorrow. So that is uh, probably one of the the most significant uh, pieces of data uh, coming out uh, apart from obviously when we go down in a minute you'll see we have some interest rate decisions on Thursday. So we have Carney speaking at 2.30 um, on Tuesday. Now I'm not going to put anything down for this because he's uh, unveiling the new £10 note can't see, I, I don't think there's really going to be anything coming out of this, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. We can bypass that. So if we go down and see Wednesday, we have U, USD building permits. Now, this can move the market, but generally speaking, we don't really take this into account as anything major. Uh, crude oil inventories on Wednesday, we're going to put down as a small X, but we're not going to put it down um, under the US dollar. We are going to put it down, in fact, on Wednesday under the CAD. Now, those who are in the room every Monday, you know why we do that. But for the new traders, you'll find that when you have uh, news around oil, if oil is going up, it will usually affect the Canadian dollar in a positive way. And if oil is going down, it will usually affect the Canadian dollar mainly uh, in a negative way. So they are correlated. Uh, it doesn't mean if oil is going up, the Canadian dollar definitely will go up. And it doesn't mean if the oil is going down, Canadian dollar will definitely go down. But it just means they are correlated. So we will be looking towards oil and the Canadian dollar uh, come Wednesday at 3.30. Now, if we go down to Thursday, Thursday really is where we have uh, pretty much the headline data for the week. Now, we have employment change and unemployment rate coming out Thursday morning for the Aussie dollar. So we're going to put a capital X on the Aussie dollar for Thursday. And you can see we're pretty much all the way through this now, so it doesn't take very long to actually do this and uh, create this plan around the fundamentals. And then one of the two major uh, pieces of data for this week is the interest rate decision for the Japanese yen on Thursday and just below it as you can see we have the interest rate decision for the euro on Thursday as well at 1.30. So these two are major events uh, coming out on Thursday and I wouldn't be surprised to see the market uh, maybe not even trading very far uh, in the euro the yen pairs uh, until um, until this news on Thursday or maybe positioning uh, you know, for the news release. So we'll bear that in mind, but these two definitely have to go down on Thursday. So that will go one under the euro and one under the Japanese yen. Now we also have retail sales coming out for the pound on uh, Thursday. So we'll just put a small X down for the pound on Thursday. Uh, even though it can, uh, it can cause a uh, large volatility if it's way, way, way divergent from the forecast. Uh, but we usually put it down as a uh, as a smaller X. And then if we come to Friday, at the end of the week, we have uh, CPI and core retail sales for the CAD. So we'll put down uh, two pieces. Um, we'll put down an X uh, for the CAD uh, on Friday. So we've completed the uh, 
the look at the uh, fundamentals for this week. Now we do have unemployment claims as well on Thursday, but generally speaking, these are released every week, so they're not uh, anything uh, huge. So if I take this away and we have a look, or in fact, let me just bring the weekly fundamental assessment over now. So can you see the uh, spreadsheet on the screen if you can, because somebody just put a Y in the box for me? Yep, John, okay, thank you. So if we have a look here, we can see that we have pretty much a clear run on the US dollar for the entire week. Euro and the Japanese yen up until Thursday. Uh, the pound, we do have uh, some uh, large news on the Tuesday. So the pound really is one, uh, pretty much this would be the trade in the pound for this week. So we'll have to uh, look to try and position ourselves around this because I expect this one to be more significant than this one. So this will be uh, the news event that we'll be looking for the pound this week. CAD and the franc, you can see CAD up until Wednesday when we have crude oil inventories, but pretty much, I mean, crude oil inventories could pass without anything major, so CAD pretty much as well this week, all the way through, same with the franc, and after tonight, we can look down towards some of the New Zealand pairs, um, so you can see here that the US dollar pretty much is going to be the best one for this week if you want to get tight stops, and I would say the pound uh, this news event here, if you want to trade, if you're going to trade with bigger stops, could be a very good catalyst. Uh, similarly, these two events here on the euro and the Japanese yen. So that is how we're going to be trading this week in the uh, ETI live room. So if I take this away and we can go now and have a look at some of the pairs and some of the opportunities that we're looking at, and we're going to start off with the. US dollar index. Now we always look at the US dollar index first because uh, the US dollar index is, is basically a basket of all the currencies against the US dollar. Now if the US dollar index is going down, you should really expect Euro, Pound, New Zealand and Oz to be going up. And if it's going uh, up, you should expect Euro, Pound, New Zealand and Oz, generally speaking, to be uh, pushing to the downside. So is the US dollar index up on the screen? If it is, could somebody just have a wine for me? And she says, yep, thank you, John, thank you, Anthony. So starting with the US dollar index, now you can see I already have uh, a little bit of a drawing on here from the beginning of the week. Now, at the end of last week, we had a really hard sell-off on the US dollar index. Uh, I can't remember uh, if we discussed it in the room. I don't want to say we discussed this in the room in case I, I don't want to sound like I'm saying I said something in the room, which I didn't, but certainly in the forecast, uh, which is uploaded every Sunday, we were sitting at this point last week and we said we were looking for a trade first of all down to these levels here and then we were looking for it to eventually continue down to the 12.30 so I th I'm pretty sure I said that here last Monday as well but I'm not 100% sure. Now we pretty much got all of this done in one week um, we came just short of the target that we set but I do expect now for this to continue to the downside we have here um, if you look purely based on the uh, price action and the structure of the market, we have a continuation move to the downside. Now, whether this is going to turn into uh, a sideways move like this or whether this is going to be a deeper pullback and a possible retest of this level up here is yet to be seen. We just have to be a little bit patient. But we're going into this week with a bearish bias on the US dollar index, so we do expect to see further declines. But the question is, um, as I said, are we going to get a sideways move first or are we going to get a pullback possibly to retest the broken uh, support level here at 12.080? So it comes back and tests broken support, fails the support, comes back, tests as resistance before heading down. So this is what we're looking for in the US dollar index. So yes, we've got a bearish bias on the US dollar index, which means pound to the upside, euro to the upside, uh, New Zealand to the upside, Aussie to the upside. But it's also a question of timing. So we don't want to just jump in uh, and take tons of trades, say, in the euro, US dollar to the upside if this is just going to keep correcting like this and we're just going to keep getting stopped out. So we need to time this uh, this week. Now, if we go and have a look at uh, oil, now the reason we look at oil, as I said earlier, is because it correlates to a number of pairs, but most uh, significantly the uh, Canadian dollar. Now, oil is in a range, I mean it's, it's ranging here which means we have a neutral bias on oil, we're prepared to play oil either way. 
Now last week we sat, we started off last week in this area here and we had a neutral bias on oil last week because again it was ranging and we said that if we get above the $45 a barrel mark we're going to be looking up towards the $47 a barrel mark and if we break below the $43.75 we're going to be looking down towards the $42.181. Now as you can see we did break above the $45 a barrel mark and from there we did in fact head up to the $47 a barrel mark which we had highlighted but we stopped we stopped short I mean this is hasn't really come up and tagged this level yet so uh, these are these are areas so something you have to remember is uh, very often uh, you'll find that you have a kind of buffer on areas like this so as you can see this hasn't come down to it here but if you put a buffer on like this you probably see you have it's probably something more like that so these are more like areas as opposed to very uh, thin specific levels uh, sometimes we have specific levels especially if we're looking for targets we're looking for uh, most of the time specific levels but otherwise you can look at these levels as being completed uh, often you know uh, with a few pips like this now whether it's been completed or not I don't know it remains to be seen uh, however we're prepared to play this either way so oil is still in an uptrend and it is still pushing up so my expectation is that this is probably going to trade into the $47 a barrel mark this week so the question will become on oil are we going to start to get a reversal in this area and if we do get a reversal on oil we will be looking back down towards the $45 a barrel mark or Or if we get a, uh, sorry, it's just something going going on with the pen here. I'm not sure what's happening. Give me a second, guys. Okay. Or if we get a break above the $47 a barrel mark, then we're going to be looking up for a target, which is where we have the blue line here. The blue line is uh, where our targets are for the week. So you can see this is what we're expecting. Uh, is a push higher. Uh, once we get into this area, we're going to be looking up towards the 48.581. So if we get a turnaround here and we start to move down to here, uh, you want to look towards the US dollar. Uh, you want to look towards the CAD as being uh, fairly weak. But if we start to break and maintain above the 47 dollar barrel mark, look towards the next key area of resistance, 48.58, uh, and look for some continued strength in the Canadian dollar above the 47 dollar barrel mark uh, in oil. So. That's how we're viewing uh, the US dollar index and oil. So uh, oil is neutral, uh, although we're expecting potential uh, balls to take over above $47 a barrel. And uh, US dollar index is bearish for the week. Uh, unless, of course, we get a you know some kind of significant reversal. So with that said, let's go and have a look at some of the actual pairs that we're looking at for this coming week. So we'll start off, let's have a look at a couple of the majors. So if we go and have a look at the euro US dollar, now, if we go back to the US dollar index, just very quickly, if we are expecting a potential pullback in the US dollar index like this, uh, whether it comes all the way up to here or just somewhere in this area, then we would be looking for a little bit of strength in the US dollar index, maybe until tomorrow, let's just say, or at least for you know a, a, a small period of time. Now, if that's the case, what we could see here in the euro US dollar is this. We could be seeing uh, a pullback and possibly even uh, a retest of the 1.1400 psychological area down here. And then if we get this kind of pullback into this area and possibly, in fact, I can see a trend line here as well. So you can see if I add the trend line there, which I've just spotted, then... Uh, we actually have quite a nice little uh, area of confluence. So we could be looking back down to here if we get a pullback in the US dollar index. Now if this uh, materializes, we're going to be looking uh, for bullish formations and patterns in this area here. And we're going to be looking to initiate shorts, first of all, up to the 1.15270, which is the next key area of resistance. But if we get a breakthrough here uh, and we get uh, more strength in the euro against the US dollar for the remainder of the week, then we are going to be looking up towards a second target of 1.16163, which is up here. So yes, we are looking at initiating longs on the euro US dollar. We do currently actually, we have here a uh, continuation move to the upside, but whether this is going to do this today with the Japanese uh, holiday uh, 
it remains to be seen. So I'm expecting possibly a pullback into this area like this, and this is where we'll be looking for our trades on the euro this week. So let's go and have a look now at the US dollar franc. Now the US dollar franc is an interesting one because uh, it's pretty much already started to move to the downside. Now you can see here that we highlighted uh, from last week this uh, resistance area up here at the 0 0.9700. Now I know, by the way, I know these charts look very simple, but the reason we I keep these simple is uh, so it's e they're easier to understand. But obviously, when we analyze the, uh, is the sound okay? Sound is okay. Okay, thanks, John. So uh, when we analyze these, obviously, we use many, many different techniques, but this just simplifies it to show you the ones that we're looking at, you know, for this coming week. So this is this was the key area of resistance that we highlighted, and we did get a pullback and a tag of this last week and a sell-off. So we are now looking for a continuation uh, on this pair to the downside, which is in line with weakness in the U.S. dollar index. Now you can see we actually have a continuation pattern already to the downside, and it started to break out from here. So we are going to be looking at initiating uh, shorts in the US dollar franc pretty much from where we uh, are at the moment. But the only problem we have is, and uh, we're not going to initiate any shorts at the moment uh, in uh, in the ETI uh, signals or the ETI live room because we're just moving down. So we want to see some sort of pullback in this pair, uh, and we will be looking at taking some shorts on the lower time frames in the US dollar franc uh, with some really nice tight stops. And as you can see, uh, we could be on for a move all the way down to the 9,500 uh, target down here in the US dollar franc. So US dollar franc is probably one of my favorite ones for this week. So certainly one to keep an eye on. Um, obviously, doesn't mean it's definitely going to go, but uh, everything is pointing towards it being potentially a very nice opportunity this week. So. So the next one we'll just have a quick look at is pound US dollar. Now the pound US dollar broke above a key resistance level here at the 1.30472. We are expecting this now to come up to the 1.31510. So what I'm expecting is similar to the euro US dollar, possibly a little pullback up to here before uh, a move down like this. And I'm looking for this broken resistance area here to now provide support. So we get a break, provide support, and then we'll be looking to initiate longs up until uh, at least up to the 1.31510, but it depends on how the uh, news comes out tomorrow because we'll probably be looking at trading this uh, as a fundamental trade or as a news trade, uh, which is different to how we normally trade it. Now, if we get some very strong data coming out of the pound uh, tomorrow, then a break above here should, you'll probably likely see this happen straight away. We'll probably get some accumulation. We could look at adding to a second position up to this area up here. So this is our overall target over here. But again, this will just have to depend on the uh, fundamental news, the CPI coming out tomorrow, which is which is the headline uh, data for uh, for the pound for this week. So, so that's what we're looking at this week in the pound US dollar. Now, if we go down to the US dollar CAD, now we're looking for the the CAD as we know to possibly break out to the upside. Uh, and uh, sorry, not the CAD, the oil. So we're looking at oil possibly put breaking out to the upside. Uh, certainly some short-term strength possibly up to the, the $47 barrel mark. But if we get a break up here and we continue up to here, we should be seeing some strength in the CAD. Now, if we're seeing some strength in the CAD and at the same time we're seeing some weakness in the US dollar index, we will see some uh, nice moves in the US dollar CAD. And in fact, that was what we had last week in, uh, in the room. We actually, this, this here, this massive sell-off here was because we had uh, strong CAD and uh, weak dollar. So when you have uh, one pair which is very strong and one pair which is very weak, this is the kind of move you will uh, you will get. So we could see that similar, maybe not as big as that, but something similar this week if we get oil break into the upside. So keep an eye on US dollar CAD. Uh, we are looking for it to continue this move to the downside, and we're looking for a downwards target at the 1.24650, uh, and. But again, we just need to wait for uh, some kind of pullback in this. Possibly even a pullback maybe up to the trend line here, uh, although that could be a little bit ambitious. So anywhere up here, if we start to see the reversal patterns that we look for on the lower time frames, we'll look at initiating shorts on the US dollar CAD down towards the 1.2465. And in fact, last week we actually, 
in the ETI live room, we actually caught pretty much this whole move uh, on the lower time frames. So that just shows when you, if you, if you can master the entering in the lower time frames, uh, you will get. I think this was about a five to one uh, risk to reward. So that's really what you want to do. You want to really master the lower time frames for your entries uh, to give you the best risk to rewards. I personally don't recommend taking uh, one to one trades, or, or in fact, we don't even take uh, two to one trades in the ETI room. It's always a minimum of three to one. Otherwise, we just we just skip them. So that's uh, that's the advice I would give there on the in regards to risk and reward. Uh, and then we'll do one final one then for you, which we haven't done uh, in the blog or in the forecast or anything, which is gold. So this one will just be uh, just for you guys. Now on gold, if we're looking for, in fact, I think you can see we haven't actually done anything on this yet because the chart's blank, but I can do this for you now. Now gold is very, very interesting because we are at a uh, very significant support area, which I think you can see pretty much straight away just with your eyes. I mean, you don't need me to tell you that we have a significant support area down here. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, failed, come back, tagged it, and now it's pushing to the upside. So this is a very good uh, significant support uh, level here that it's bounced from. So if we have a bounce from support and we also have um, a weakness in the US dollar index. We could be seeing gold uh, pushing to the upside this week. So that begs the question, uh, where could we be looking uh, in gold? Now we have a pattern down here, uh, which is a reversal pattern. Which is called a head and shoulders, or it's actually an inverse head and shoulders for those of you who, uh, who know. Uh, and what we're going to be looking for is, we're going to be looking for a continuation of this move now to the upside. Uh, but what we want to see is if we are going to get a pullback or if we're going to see a little bit of a rally in US dollar index maybe for the rest of today or tomorrow, I uh, would expect to see uh, possibly gold pushing to the downside for a little bit, maybe even a retest of the broken trend line here. And then after that, uh, we'll be looking at initiating longs. And I mean, for a target, if I give you a target, Uh, you just have to bear with me because I'm actually doing this here now with you uh, live. So I'd say the next key area of uh, resistance on this pair, uh, and there are obviously uh, intermediate uh, resistance levels, et cetera, et cetera. But the trade we'll be looking for in gold is this. If we get a pullback here on the head and shoulders, we will be looking for a pullback as, as the US dollar index possibly rallies up to the resistance level to retest it. If you remember, it broke through, and now it's sort of making its way, and it's about here. So if we get this move up in the US dollar index, we could be looking for a pullback in the in gold. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down onto the lower time frames and we're going to look for some reversal patterns on the lower time frames. And we'll be looking up towards the roughly, say, the 1.240 area over here. Now, it doesn't look like there's a huge amount of distance between where we are now um, and the price, which is why it's important uh, to take your entries uh, on the lower time frame. So uh, a trade like this, even from here to here, Rather than being a one to one, you might find you can get uh, three, four, five, you know, six to one on this. So those are some of the opportunities that we're going to be looking at this week in the ETI live room. Hopefully uh, these will help you out. Like I say, last week uh, we had a very good week, so uh, hopefully some of you guys who aren't in the live room uh, managed to capture some uh, some profits from those as well. So we're up to the half an hour mark now, so that's all tied in fairly nicely. So what we'll do is we'll See if there's any questions. If anybody's got any questions they want to ask me just about general trading, about any of the pairs we've got, um, or even uh, if somebody wants me to have a look at a pair, uh, I'm quite happy to do that. So if anybody's got any questions, just tap them into the box and uh, I'll be happy to answer them for you. How do I see the ETI room? Okay. Uh, 
Okay, John. So if you give me, uh, John, are you? I take your with Portex, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what we can do is, um, if you, because I don't know where to put uh, details in here, but you can go to uh, the ETI Live Room. If you go to www.ethicaltradinginstitute.com, um, you can see all the details on there, and you can see the access to the Live Room on there. Now, what we do is. Um, we uh, we have a drive basically to uh, provide ethical forex education because uh, unfortunately, and I'm, I'll just be I'll just be completely honest with you, um, there's a lot of uh, companies out there who are providing education or whoever, and they're either purposely misleading people or they're accidentally misleading people because um, they've been taught say how to use indicators and all this kind of stuff, which is not. Uh, institutions and banks do not trade with moving averages and all this kind of stuff. They trade based around psychology and how other people in the markets are reacting and how you can uh, essentially, you know, uh, profit from the irrational behavior of other traders. That's that's how they trade. So you'll find all that information on there. But uh, Ben will be able to uh, provide you some information, uh, John, if um, if you pass over your details to him and if you're interested, uh, be happy to uh, you know uh, speak to you about it. Uh, are there any other questions about any of the charts or anything for this week or anything somebody wants to know about um, any trading you know in general just give it 30 seconds or so because I can't I can't see if people are typing or not so uh, I just have to wait to see give you a little bit of time to see if there's any questions But what we also do, uh, John, is we put our um, uh, the ETI fund is all uh, put out live online, so you can actually follow it and you can see the progress it makes. And when we have losing trades, you can see it going down and it go up and down. So you can actually follow the results. So we don't um, we don't ask anyone to take some faith or anything like that. So it's all out there. It's all transparent, so you can see uh, exactly what's going on. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's any questions. Um, so what we'll do is I'll hand back over to Ben. Uh, is there anything you wanted to say, Ben, or anything you want to add? No, that, that, that's great. Thanks again for that, John. Another fantastic um, webinar. And as always, we will be doing these each week. So you get an email on the Sunday to, to sign up um, for the Monday. Um, and also to, to John Sharp, I've just uh, I've just pinged you across an email as well. So if you want to get in touch, um, do let me know, and I'll give you more information about both uh, Portex and, and ETI. Um, and yeah, if if you want to, you can also head over to either of our websites and and, um, and reach out to us via email. But no, aside from that, that's uh, that's all for this week, guys. Um, and we'll we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, great. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, and if, if anyone has any other uh, questions or anything they want to ask, just pop a question over to Ben or the details and. Um, he can provide any information you guys want, um, and because I mean we, you know, we will be able to get you trading if you're struggling. I know not all of you are struggling if you're trading. I mean some of you are already trading profitably, and you just come in for the, you know, to get a little bit of extra idea and stuff, and that's fine. But anybody who is struggling, if you just ping Ben a message, he'll let you know all the details uh, for anything you want to know. Great okay, so thanks for today, guys. Uh, I'll see you all next week. Thanks, John. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye, bye. Yeah. Bye, Anthony. Take care.